Welcome to the OLV Daily Reflection for Tuesday, October 12th. The Gospel passage for today's Mass comes to us from the 11th chapter of St. Luke's Gospel. It reads, After Jesus had spoken, a Pharisee invited him to dine at his home. He entered and reclined at table to eat. The Pharisee was amazed to see they did not observe the prescribed washing before the meal. The Lord said to him, O oh, you Pharisees, although you cleanse the outside of the cup and dish, inside you are filled with plunder and evil. You fools, did not the maker of the outside also make the inside? But as to what is within, give alms, and behold, everything will be clean for you. As I was praying with this gospel passage, I was reminded of advice I sometimes give while talking to people during confession. Because sometimes during confessions, people will ask me this question, Father, why do I keep committing this sin? And truthfully, I might have some ideas on why a person keeps committing a certain sin, but I usually always end with the following advice. Whatever the reason is, you're not gonna stop yourself from committing this sin until you figure out what's causing it. And it's common sense advice. We have to know what causes our behavior in order to fix it, in order to change it. But again, sometimes this is hard to address because we don't know what our motivations are, or sometimes situations are very complicated. And I should add that I have to sometimes figure out my motivations on why I continue to fall in habitual sin. And I still have some hard work to do in my own spiritual life. But again, this interaction between Jesus and the Pharisee in today's gospel points out the fact that holiness does not come simply from doing the right things. It has to involve much more. We have to actually have the right motivations in order to bring about the right actions. And Jesus is making this point in today's passage because the disposition of the hearts and minds of the Pharisees caused them to sin. They may be doing good things, but they are doing them simply for show or because they expect other people to laud them for that reality. But again, brothers and sisters, if we want to make progress in our spiritual lives, if we want to root out sin, if we want to grow out in holiness, we have to have a good sense of what motivates us, what drives us in our lives. And truthfully, to be disciples of Jesus Christ, what should motivate us and drive us is imitating Jesus Christ in all things. But again, how do we do that? When Jesus ends today's gospel passage, he gives some very good advice. Quote, but as to what is within, give alms, and behold, everything will be clean for you. The giving of alms, the giving of money, the giving of time or talent, this action identifies a person who is being self-sacrificial, putting the needs of others before oneself. And this inward disposition is probably one of the best ways to start addressing our personal sinfulness and growing in holiness, because sin always involves some act of pride, where we justify a sinful act when we know we're not supposed to do it. So every self-sacrificial act, every time we give, pushes against our pride and helps us to develop a pattern of giving that builds up virtue and builds up good habits so it becomes easier for us to give and furthermore it helps us to be more generous in the future and Jesus modeled self-sacrifice in everything he did so again if we want to be disciples or imitators of Jesus Christ we have to become more and more self-sacrificial throughout our lives but I should say, with all this being said, there is one significant issue that needs to be addressed. Many of us, including myself at times, does not like to make sacrifices. 
In fact, many of us become resentful when we believe we're making sacrifices when it seems no one else is making them. Or we're get, we become resentful when it seems like we're giving more than others are giving. And this is part of the Pharisee struggles with Jesus and his disciples. Why do they do certain things and we don't? Or again, the belief that, well, why would they have an exemption when we don't? So anytime resentment comes into our lives, we have to be very careful. I would see, I would tell us that resentment or that feeling of resentment is a great opportunity to make sacrifices. That that's a gift the Lord is giving us that we don't have to keep score. That we don't have to worry about what is the right amount, the just amount, the appropriate amount. It is simply our job to give. And I think there's a good reminder that we also need to put into our lives. That if we did keep score, if there was an accurate and objective account of everything that happened in this world, I think you and I would be surprised to see how blessed we are in comparison to others. That we probably shouldn't be resentful for anything just because of how blessed we are in our own lives. So as we continue to live out our lives of discipleship, let us truly be men and women who focus on following Jesus Christ with our hearts and our minds. And yes, we need to do good actions, but we need to have a heart and mind focusing on following Christ in order for those good actions to bear the most fruit for the kingdom. And furthermore, let's be self-sacrificial let us give of ourselves willingly and not keep score. Our Lady of Victory, pray for us.